Ordo pulmonary hypertension is a subgroup of group one pulmonary arterial hypertension. And it occurs in the setting of hepatic cirrhosis or what's commonly referred to as end-stage liver disease. And when that happens, the circulation from the GI tract through the liver gets congested. And that's referred to as portal hypertension. It produces fluid in the abdomen, ascites. It can produce a lot of collateral circulation in the GI circulation called varices. And that has a high association with development of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So when you have both together, that's called portal pulmonary hypertension. Patients with end-stage liver disease can have other causes of pulmonary hypertension which do not involve narrowing of the pulmonary vessels. And the specialist has to sort that out. And it generally involves a right heart catheterization to determine whether the pulmonary hypertension is there because the patient with hepatic cirrhosis is retaining too much fluid, or perhaps they have what's referred to as a high cardiac output state. But they may very well have portal pulmonary hypertension. If you look at populations of patients that are referred for liver transplant, maybe up to five or six percent of those patients have portal pulmonary hypertension that's discovered during their evaluation for whether or not they might be eligible for a liver transplant. In terms of the risk for developing pulmonary arterial hypertension, it's really that setting that I just described. It could be that they have some skin manifestations, what's called spider angiomas, that might be similar to what I've described with the telangiectasias that you see in connective tissue disease that might be prevalent or more prominent. But in general, it's an assessment of whether or not they feel like they've developed cardiopulmonary symptoms of shortness of breath or maybe chest tightness or lightheadedness with exertion, something that might suggest that they have portal pulmonary hypertension that would prompt you to investigate further, typically with an echocardiogram to see if the right heart pressures are elevated or the right heart is dilated or having trouble with systolic contraction, what's called systolic hypokinesis. There are certain interventions that can be done for patients with porto hypertension and end-stage liver disease that are designed to try to help the complications of the liver disease that might increase their risk of portal pulmonary hypertension. There's a procedure called TIPS, which is a transjugular shunt that's created in the liver to help reduce this portal hypertension. And when you do that, unfortunately, in a subset of patients, it may increase their risk for developing portal pulmonary hypertension. But aside from that, it's really interviewing the patient to see if they have symptoms that might be suggestive, perhaps one or two examination findings that might indicate that you need to investigate further. And then lastly, if the patient is being referred for a liver transplant patient, that center will investigate this possibility in detail because it's difficult to safely do a liver transplant patient in uncontrolled pulmonary hypertension. It increases their risk of serious complication, even death. So the centers will certainly want to diagnose portal pulmonary hypertension, treat it, get it under control before they would ever recommend moving forward with a liver transplant. It's important to remember that patients with portal pulmonary hypertension have two distinct comorbid conditions. They have pulmonary arterial hypertension, but they also have significant liver disease. In most patients with portal pulmonary hypertension, their overall prognosis is actually determined more by the severity of their liver disease than by the severity of their pulmonary hypertension, but the pH severity also plays a role in their overall prognosis in that patients with a low cardiac index or patients with an elevated pulmonary vascular resistance have worse survival over time.